Coach Prime will not be in attendance of Pac-12 Media Day, but he did promise one thing and one thing only, and I'm going to talk about that on today's episode of Locked on Buffs. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? This is Locked on Bus. I'm your host, Kevin Borba. As usual, today we're going solo. Um, we're going to be talking about a few different things. We're talking about why Coach Prime is missing Pac 12 Media Day, which, as you can see to my right, probably your left, not sure, um, he has the surgery. Um, he's having another blood clot removal surgery, and he's also going to have a procedure on his toes to help straighten them out. Um, we're going to be talking about why Colorado wants to remain in the Pac 12 and why they are not eager about joining the Big 12. Um, despite the the noise that the Big 12 no, peoples are making. And then a handful of Colorado Buffs got some preseason awards, so I'll be talking about that as well. Um, but before we do, I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Buffs your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast or your team every single day. Okay, let's dive right in. Um, if you guys aren't aware, or if you weren't aware and want to be, um, tomorrow, Friday, July 21st, there will be Pac-12 Media Day. And so media members like myself, which I won't be attending because I have someone who um, I have someone attending on my behalf um, from people from all over the Pac-12 area, the landscape and probably national reporters, too, because they want to ask about realignment and media rights stuff, which is going to be kind of annoying. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, they're all going to Las Vegas and they will be it's every team in the Pac-12 sends two players um, and a coach, their head coach. Um, usually a player from offense and defense um, for Colorado. It's going to be Shadur and Travis. Um, so they're going to be able to kind of be on national display for, I won't say the first time, but this will be the first time that probably the national media has had a crack at them. Um, usually it's like the Colorado or Jackson state media with obviously a few national media's member, national media members mixed in, but there's going to be a lot more. Um, this is like the, every conference has a media day and it's always like the, the hub of everything in the off season. Um, so a lot of people were excited. Um, the person that is going on my behalf included that Coach Prime was going to be there. And unfortunately for him, uh, for Coach Prime, not for the guy I'm sending, not for Jordan, um, he will not be attending. And he released, there was a video released, and it explained it much better than, it's him explaining his surgery situation and why he will miss out. And I think it's a fair reason. I don't, I'm not mad at the guy. I think he's got to do what's best for him, what's best for his health. So let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to play the vi the video, which is from Well Off Media. Um, so let's get that going. Guys, that I'm not going to be at the Pac-12 Media Day to have a, another surgery tomorrow. Uh, one in my leg as well as to remove other clots. And they got to go. You can even show these, but we really don't know show up. But you can show. This is going to be the last time my toes look like that. Okay, you see how they all bent over? Tell them what they're going to do, Lauren. They're going to straighten them out. These two, they're going to straighten this one out, and they're going to straighten this one out as well. Right. And I'm really dislocated up on the bottom. I don't know if they're going to get to that. Left. No, that'll be That's another later. time. Yep. That's a whole but they're going to fix these two toes so they are they don't cause any more pain in the shoes. Right. And they're going to get the blood clot out of this Out leg. of the right so leg. We already Correct. took care of them and got them out of this leg. Now we got to get them out of that. But uh, God got me. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your your wishes thank you for your uh, everything thank you for everything and let me tell you this this is how the devil works he thinks that if he stops my mobility he can stop my ability <laughs> the devil is a lie mm. he, he, he can't do that okay you could you you can't stop my mobility first and foremost and that don't stop my ability my uh, ability is god given you cannot touch that you could delay that but you can't deny that so I'm going to be high stepping and running out. I promise you, when we go to TCU, I'm running out in front of our team. I mean, you heard it there first. He's going to be out there running with the team, running with the squad um, at the TCU game, which obviously you want to you, – we all hope the surgery goes well. It's his second surgery in two months to remove blood clots from his legs and also help with his toes to give him some more mobility down there because um, it sounds like he's had some pain while he's wearing shoes and his feet. Um, so everything just hopefully he gets better, but I liked the, the part at the end there where he said he's going to be high stepping and running with the team in front of TCU, which is scheduled for September 2nd, which is less than 50 days away. I think, um, 
Toronto. So that's exciting. If you're a Buffs fan, you obviously want to see Coach Prime healthy. You don't want to see him have any issues. Um, so it's very understandable why he's missing Pac-12 Media Day. Um, can't fault him at, at, in the slightest. Um, Charles Kelly, the defense coordinator, will be going on his behalf. Um, Charles Kelly is someone who, while I think he's one of the mo- more experienced coaches on the staff, he's someone who we talked about a couple days ago on the show, was getting looks at the Auburn head coaching job um, when it was open. Um, so Charles Kelly, I don't I won't say he could use the experience, but this will be a, an experience for him where he could kind of be the head coach at a major media day, especially for a major program like Colorado that's become a major program um, because of all the transfer portal stuff. He's going to be fielding. Um, I don't know if it'd be all the questions that coach prime is going to be, was going to be asked, but it's, he's going to be fielding quite a few questions and you have to respect it. You have to love it. And so here's the thing about Colorado um, heading into the, the regular season. So many people have so many questions. There's going to be so many questions about the transfer portal. There's going to be so many questions about coaches like Brent Venables, Matt rule, Jim Mora, um, Pat Narduzzi. There are going to be a lot of questions about that. Um, I think they're going to still ask Charles Kelly, coach Charles Kelly, um, whether or not he has an answer for them that they like, I doubt he will. I imagine he's just going to say something along the lines of we're focused on the season ahead of us. We're focused on preparing for TCU as any coach should. Um, I think yesterday, a lot of, which I'm not surprised, a lot of Oklahoma fans found my the episode of talking about Brett Venables and they were all upset saying just because you bring someone up doesn't mean it's shade, which um, we'll have to agree to disagree. Um, I think when you go out of your way to bring up someone who is not in your conference and someone who's been publicly criticized already, and I think you bring him on and kind of – it felt like it was piling on. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I guess I'm not in the mind of Brent Venables. But um, I think a lot of coaches would rather refrain from posting um, or posting, talking about certain things. Speaking of post- posting, Lane Kiffin clearly agreed with me. He posted my article about Brent Venables talking that smack about Coach Prime. So obviously people do not agree with Co- um, Brent Venables. Um, but it's interesting. It's interesting to see where – college football is at this at its current state it's interesting to see what it's kind of turned into with all of the media rights stuff and all of the um the expansion talks because i think now more than ever people are focusing on specific programs colorado especially because coach prime's there and they're like what what is the move here and then when you bring in coach prime who kind of changes everything up from a football landscape people want to talk about it even more and so i think it's a good thing for colorado it's a good thing for business over here um, it's just interesting to see w- how people talk about it um, and how what they think about it. And we're going to see that over the weekend during uh, Pac-12 Media Day, which should be fascinating. Um, so I'll have any updates um, throughout the throughout the week if, or throughout the remaining rest of the week. And I'll write about it over at Athlon too as well. Um, so you guys will be updated on everything that happens at Pac-12 Media Day. So I appreciate you guys for following along. But what you guys need to know, um, Coach Prime, not making it. Uh, not this year. Uh, he's got to he's got to tend to some surgery and get get his foot right, get his leg right, um, remove a blood clot, help his toes, get some more mer- movement circulation, um, and hopefully he recovers quickly. Um, this episode is brought to you by a good old sponsor, LinkedIn. Um, these days, every new potential hire could feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100 percent certain that you have access to best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out our LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. My personal experience, my first job out of college, LinkedIn. I connected with the hiring manager. We talked. He said what they needed from the role even before I had my interview. And then going into the interview, we had a relationship. So that was really cool. Um, We were able to talk. I was able to kind of sell myself a little before the interview. um, And then it helped me throughout the interview because we had that familiarity. And Interviews are super awkward. So any way to make them less awkward. And LinkedIn helps you find the perfect job and everything. Um, So add if you want to find the perfect person for your job. Um, Add your job and purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. Spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you could quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview. Um, I, myself, we all know. The right person on the, a football team is the right person that can help that team win. The right person in your job, in, in your work environment. That could be the difference between a good environment, productive environment, and not. So LinkedIn helps you find the perfect environment. They could help you find the perfect candidate to create that perfect environment. So it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs, number one, in de- delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. 
LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may apply. Okay, so we talked about why Coach Prime will not be in attendance of Pac-12 Media Day. Um, no fault of his own. He's got some some medical things to to hammer out um, to get to get under wraps. And so let's let's wish him a speedy recovery. Um, next topic: Colorado wants to be in the Pac-12. Okay, me and Spencer talked about it yesterday, and I think the issues that people are finding with this topic, I guess is I especially big 12 fans is specifically big 12 fans and big 12 people who have big 12 uh, sources. I think they want this to happen so bad because Colorado right now, while they aren't the program itself, isn't like a blue blood by any means. The program is, um, how do I say this hot commodity? That's a hot commodity. They got coach prime. They got all these transfers. A lot of people are talking about them. It's a televised spring game. Why wouldn't you want Colorado? But here's the thing. The Big 12 is not as attractive as a conference as it seems. Um, going back to, I think it's 2010. Um, I wrote about this the other day. Texas and Oklahoma have literally been carrying the Big 12's brand, whether people want to admit it or not. Texas and Oklahoma have been the number one and two recruiting classes in the Big 12 since 2010. Uh, you have to go back all the way to the 1990s, um, maybe even no, maybe even further. I forgot what it was, but you have to go back quite a while before you find a year where Texas or Oklahoma didn't play in the Big 12 championship. Okay, there's kind of a, a misconception around here that the Big 12 is, I think people are getting lost in the quantity of the Big 12, because um, obviously they're going to have more teams than the Pac-12, but I think people are failing to realize um that the Big 12 without Texas and Oklahoma does not have a premier brand. Um, I don't know if Colorado, I think Colorado would have a chance to emerge as that premier brand, but is it is it the the upgrade that people are making a seem? No, Here, here's the, the stat I had. Um, so either Texas or Oklahoma has appeared in every conference title game available because obviously they stopped doing conference title games um, from 1999 to, two, to 2020. Um, so the past two seasons, obviously, they didn't make it. Um, those are the first time since 1998 that neither appeared. Um, and obviously, they've been dominating recruiting. So, I mean, if Colorado were to go to the Big 12, they would easily be the best recruiting um, program in there. Um, they probably would be a marquee team, to be honest. Um, so that's always attractive. But I don't think they want to be a marquee team because the rest of the conference is not attractive. <laughs> um, so... Phil DeStefano, the conference chan Colorado chancellor, excuse me, um, talked about this the other day. Um, that rumor, because the rumors again surfaced of Colorado to the Big Twelve, and he said the goal is to stay within the Pac twelve, the Pac twelve, and have a media deal come up coming up shortly. Um, he told this to the Denver Post. That's our goal, and I believe the president and chancellors of the Pac twelve are all together on that. Um, I think the speculation has happened because there's not a deal at this point. There's a lot of talk, talk about Big 12 expansion, excuse me, but I don't really, but I don't read social media very much. So I don't know what people are saying, but I hope that we'll have some direction Thursday in our meeting, which is today, um, which apparently the meeting, nothing was too crazy was revealed. I think, uh, let me finish reading what he said. Um, said, I'm eagerly awaiting to hear what the commissioner has to say Thursday, but at this point, the Pac-12 schools are staying together and awaiting a message and a message from the commissioner. So I don't think a lot was learned today, but I think for those of you that are re overreacting, I'm going to call it overreacting because it is overreacting. For those of you that are reading certain reports by certain people who have kind of been spreading the Big 12 side of things, um, you have to realize we knew last week, July 7th, I don't know if I talked about it. I probably should have. I think I did, though. July 7th, we knew last of which was literally 13, 13 days ago now, we knew that the conference was not going to have a deal by Pac-12 Media Day. It was reported by sports business journalist John Arand, Ar Arand I think is how you say it. Um, they said around they'll have some sort of, um, I guess, direction, and they're going to talk about that today and Friday. But no deal was going to be had until Labor Day. 
So all these people that are reacting as if, oh, the sky is falling in Pac-12 country again. They don't have a deal. It's media rights day. They had a meeting today and they didn't have a deal. We knew this was going to happen. We knew it. So don't don't get caught up in the, the noise of, oh, so-and-so from this major outlet said this is distracting from the Pac-12 season. Is it distracting from the Pac-12 season? Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, were they expecting them to find something today? I think some people were. And if you were, you just weren't following along, which is okay. I mean, it's a lot of boring stuff to follow along to. But as someone whose job it is, I'm following along. And we knew this last week. So I think the the overreaction from people where it's like, oh, my gosh, here we go again. We were already here we going again last week. There was no need to here we go again. Um, the Pac-12 was never going to have a deal by this date. Um, I think when John Canzano came on my show about a month ago, he said it was that was the goal. That was kind of like the deadline or the closest thing to a deadline. And we quickly learned after that, that it wasn't going to happen um, to no fault of John's. It's just, that's what he was being kind of told and what the people were expecting. And then the PAC 12 realized that it wasn't going to happen. Now there's a few things that I think you could point to one. I think they want to get expansion numbers. They want to see the value with expansion stuff. I think there's a lot of hesitancy by, cause they said that they have a lot of new people coming in to the meetings, which is like ESPN and other outlets, which is great for them because the more nationally televised games, the better. Um, here's the thing. Does ESPN announce a major deal right now after they've laid off hundreds of people? Probably not. You know, they probably want to, it's what you call a, um, Oh no, I can't even think of it. A news dump. If you will, it's going to be coming when, People's minds are not fresh off, fresh and thinking about all the layoffs and stuff like that. So don't think that's going to happen. Um, I also think the Pac-12, while they waited a really long time and their PR thing has been an absolute crisis, they've committed to waiting. So why not wait some more and make sure you get the best deal possible? Um, if ever, if more people are going to get involved, why wouldn't you want that to happen if you can make more money somehow? So I think it's a little disappointing that we haven't had it yet and we're talking about this instead of the fact that the pac 12 is about to have arguably the best season ever um but hey that's the pac 12's choice they want it this way they want to see what their options are can't fault them for that um but i do see where the frustrations grow um but again colorado wants to be in the the pac 12 no program in the pac 12 wants to leave the conference except maybe the three or four that think they would get a big 10 invite which they probably wouldn't um unless the Big Ten kind of tries to get more aggressive, but the Big Ten's not getting aggressive right now. So realistically, no one wants to leave the Pac-12. The Big 12 is, I think that they'll have more teams, but do the quality of their brands don't think they're nearly as high. Um, it is what it is. So um, when we come back, we're going to be talking about all the buffs, which there's, I think, seven to eight of them got preseason awards. So I'm going to talk about them and the potential that they bring to this team in the upcoming season when we come back. Welcome back. We're talking about the preseason awards that the Buffs got. Um, let me pull it up right here on my laptop. So in total, we got, let me enlarge it so I can actually read it. Got new contacts yesterday. Um, I will say my prescription was way off the first time I could actually read things. Like I'm reading signs from down the road. It's a crazy, crazy process or crazy concept. Didn't realize that was supposed to be happening. Um, they had two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys Received some sort of um, preseason all Pac-12 nod. Um, this is between us at Athlon, um, the Pac-12 itself, PFF, and Phil Steele. Phil Steele. I always have a trouble with his name. It's like a weird little ill eel thing. Um, say, say Phil Steele um, out loud while you're listening to me um, and tell me it's not difficult because I think it is. Anyway, um, let's start off with Jimmy Horn. First team kick returner, Athlon. Um, Jimmy Horn is dangerous with the ball in his hands. No surprise there. Um, he was also a second team returner for Phil Steele. Um, obviously, he has a lot of potential. Lightning in a bottle type guy. Really dangerous wide receiver, which is why he got fourth team um, from both Athlon and, and PS. And then he was a return specialist. Um, honorable mention for the Pac-12 itself. Um, I think a lot of people are expecting big things out of Jimmy Horn. He was he made major headlines during the, the spring uh, practices got his number first kind of established himself as one of the premier offensive players travis hunter first team defensive back for athlon the pac-12 and pff um, he was also first team all-purpose for athlon in the pac-12 second team corner for phil Steele, and then honorable mention for wide receiver for the pac-12 travis is just that guy 
I don't, there's not really a, a way to explain it. He has great ball skills, um, great athlete, and probably is going to end up being one of the top 15 best players in college football by the end of the year. Um, he's just could do it all. Specialist getting some love. We got Mark Vassett or Vassett. I think it's Vassett. Um, the punter. Uh, from the Louisville transfer, got third team punter for Athlon, four team for Phil Steele, and then honorable mention for Pac-12 um, punters. While they don't get a lot of love, um, punters like a barber. When you don't got a good one, people notice. Uh, people notice when your barber's messing your hair cut up. Which I'm I'm getting a haircut today, so I don't want to see any comments. Um, I had to reschedule. Got a little under the weather last Friday, which is why I didn't have an episode. But like I said, if you don't have a good punter. People notice um, if your punter is not helping you flip the field. That's when people notice your punter. When you have a really good one, they kind of fly under the radar. Sucks for them, but it's the the truth of the matter. Um, Trevor Woods, the safety. Um, Colorado safeties are absolutely stacked. Um, he is the only safety safety, excuse me, to get um, a nod here. Third team for PFF, fourth team for Athlon. One of the few returning guys from last season that I think could start. I don't know if he will start. Um, I think that safety battle is going to be very intense. Um, Levante Bentley, uh, linebacker from Clemson transfer. Um, he got third team from Phil Steele. Uh, he's kind of someone that I think could be a leader on the defense. Um, one of the more productive linebackers that they have. Um, an offensive line surprised me, but Jack Bailey from uh, the guard, the Kent State transfer. Phil Steele, third team. Um, Alton McCaskill. Surprised he didn't get more. Only got third team from Athlon. Shout out us over at Athlon. Um, I think he's going to emerge as one of the top few backs in the Pac-12, if not the best. Uh, Derek McClendon, four team, defensive line, Athlon. And then Savelle Small has got an Athlon uh, fourth team nod as well. Disappointed, no Jordan Dominics. Disappointed in every, everybody. Um, disappointed. I, I understand why Shadar didn't get the nod. Um, the Pac-12 is just too loaded at quarterback right now. Um, he need. I think that he, there's too much that we don't know about him against Pac-12 opponents when you have Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix out there, um, probably all claiming the, th- the top four spots with Cam Rising as well, So or Cam Ward or whoever. Um, I think Colorado has a lot of talented players. Really excited to see how they turn out. Um, the fact that they have this many guys getting honorable mentions or first team, third team, whatever it may be, that's a good sign. That means there's talent on the roster. Um, that means there's talent that people are acknowledging. And that means that there's talent that the Buffs have and that they're gonna be they're gonna be unleashing um, here in a few weeks. So very excited to see what the Buffs turn into. Um, I want to thank you guys for getting me to 2,300 subscribers. We hit a new benchmark, and so I appreciate you guys helping me reach that mark. And hopefully, we continue to grow. Um, I appreciate all the support you guys have. All your comments. Uh, make sure to comment a question for tomorrow i would like to do a mailbag uh segment so you guys have a great rest of your day have a great thursday wish me luck it's slow pitch softball thursdays we got to get that dub we lost our first game of the season last week tough one we were down a couple players um but hey appreciate you guys for tuning in have a great thursday